Good afternoon, everybody. Call this work session to order. One item on our agenda is the uh, city center community, uh, city center plan implementation of neighborhood support program. Uh, and this is the vacant structures ordinance. Welcome, Mr. Brubaker. I'm going to turn it over to staff to go over the uh, latest too. concerns and answer any more questions we have. Since the last meeting we reviewed the, um, the proposed um, revisions to the vacant structures program, staff took a look at the, um, the comments that we heard from the council at the last meeting and we made some, well, it sounds really loud, we made some changes um, to reflect what we were hearing and we were here tonight to, to see if that satisfies the concerns that, that came up or if you have any other issues. But in the memo I, I tried to summarize it so we can go through it rather quickly. Um, who was, the one question that was who was the responsible property and um, who was responsible for the property as we revised the definition of owner in both ordinances to remove references to vacant property and leave as real property. The definition now matches the definitions of property maintenance code and the rental licensing code so that those in control of property are also accountable for the property conditions. Um, what about properties with multiple structures? We revised the definition of non-residential structure to read any structure or premise in whole. We revised the definition of a vacant non-residential structure and a vacant residential structure to add the following sentence. For properties with multiple uh, structures, such as shopping centers with pad sites or apartment complexes, complexes, if any individual structure is vacant for a continuous six-month period, that structure shall be subject to terms of this chapter. And one thing we want to point out to you, um, a typo issue with this, which will give you a corrected page this evening if you move forward this evening, is that the residential ordinance will only refer to apartment complexes and the non-residential ordinance will only refer to shopping centers since that's when it would come up. We have it at referring both. And really, since it's a residential ordinance, one will just refer to the apartment complexes in this section that I just talked about. And the non-residential will just refer to the shopping center one as examples of, of multiple structure properties. So then for the revised the definition of vacant blighted non-residential structure and vacant blighted residential structure to add the following sentence for properties with multiple structures. And again, when, if it's the commercial ordinance, it'll be shopping centers. If it's the residential one, it'll be apartments. If any individual structure meets this definition, that structure will be subject to the terms of this chapter. So that would be in case of if you have a property that has multiple sort of primary structures on it, if one of them goes entirely vacant, either after six months or if it's blighted, placarded, or, or for, for, well, probably wouldn't be foreclosed, blighted or placarded, that, that individual structure in the property would come into the program. That was uh, attempting to respond to uh, Councilman Alshire's comments from the last meeting. And then um, about the SEPTED standards, what if street lights are adequate? We revised the section talking about lighting to add an, a sentence that says, exterior lighting is not required in any entry door where street lighting meets the minimum illumination level required by this section. So if the street lights are adequate to provide the illumination we're looking for for the entry door, then you don't need to add another light. And then what if front yard landscape screening is desirable for the property? We revised the standards and combined the two that talk about landscaping. And now it reads, all shrubbery, hedges, trees, or similar vegetation shall be maintained so that a clear view of the entry doors from the public sidewalk or street is not impeded. Rather than saying a clear view of the structure or a clear view of entry doors and windows, we just left it at a clear view of the entry doors. Again, trying to be responsive to what we were hearing at the last meeting. And so um, those are the changes that we made. And again, just letting you know that we're going to have to clean up that typo issue in terms of if you want to make these changes to so that the residential ordinance for the multiple structures just talks about apartments and the non-residential ordinance for multiple structures just talks about shopping centers with pad sites. How would you classify a mixed use building? Let's say here in downtown, we have commercial on the first floor, residential. Right. Is that considered commercial? That would be mixed, a mixed use structure. Okay. Where you have at least one residential thing and at least one non-residential thing. Where does it fall under in terms of this, these ordinances? That would be in the non-residential ordinance. Okay. And it's, it's spelled out in the definitions I thought in the non-residential I thought chapter. I recalled seeing something about the mixed use there. Right. Okay, any other? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. um, still struggling with this, uh, this tree and shrubbery thing. If you go down the, I guess it's the 300 block of South Potomac, 
almost every one of those entry doors, the main entry door, is four or five steps up, correct? Which uh, about half of those are impeded by city trees, correct? I, I think it's, uh, yeah, I would have to go look to see if it's impeded. The, um, the standard that we have here is very similar to the standard we have for house numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, your house numbers have to be on the structure in such a way that um, our first responders and that can see your address. And by limiting it to the, the door area, it, it's a very similar standard. Okay. Um, I can tell you that, that in walking down South Potomac or driving past clearly the front doors of any number of those structures, which I think we would identify uh, uh, have uh, decently uh, often changeover uh, in residency and level mm -hmm. of, of you know, being occupied. And a good number of those are, are certainly impeded by uh, our own street trees. So I'm just trying to, to rectify, again, the issue of consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and for that particular item, um, I'm not sure how you do that. The other item is, it's intended here to mean non-residential, correct? Not commercial? Right. In other words, if a church is vacant for a year, they're going to fall under the same standard of having to pay $1,000 as long as they remain vacant, correct? Yes, it, it, it's not set up uh, to uh, exclude, any exclude particular anything property. based upon whether or not a property is exempt from taxation or uh, different types of ownership, uh, rather just the status of the structure. Okay. I guess just for me, I'm not, I'm not okay with, with, with the tree portion. Uh, I, I think that that's difficult to, to enforce uh, any consistency toward, and I think it uh, produces an undue burden on properties that have uh, managed uh, and sometimes mature uh, shrubbery and tree growth in front of the properties, uh, which have uh, little bearing on uh, enforcement of, of, of the code. I, I, I don't see it. Any other thoughts or questions, uh, feedback? I have um, a question on the commercial side. Uh, the shopping center specifically, I was trying to find something on that, I couldn't find it. <laughs> As I'm reading this, Every vacant storefront in a shopping center would be required to be registered and licensed? No, only if the entire strip went vacant. Okay. Or the entire structure. Okay, okay. So Long Meadow, for instance, would not be considered. Okay, I'm fine. Yeah, CVS would be separate and the banks would be separate. The old Sears building. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Understood. That's that's fine. So the old Sears building would fall under this because that entire building is vacant. With the changes that were made, uh, mm -hmm. and based and on an Councilmember Elshar's recommendation, right. and an individual structure. Yes, for the Sears but, building. <laughs> but a place down here, like the laundromat across from uh, uh, the Lamp Place, as you get toward Antietam Street, because the apartments above, I'm assuming, are occupied. That place isn't. Well, actually, I believe that particular one's completely vacant. It's okay. condemned, is it not? I'm not sure, sir. But, but, but if, if you have a vacant storefront but it's occupied above, it would not be in this program. So if that had an apartment that was occupied, that laundromat, I mean, we know which one we're talking yes, about. Sir. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. That, that, that would not be in the vacant structure program. Any other questions for you, Mr. Brubaker? I think he had the best quote from the last meeting, which was, we don't want to sacrifice the good for the perfect. Uh, so I think upon 
you know, execution of this ordinance, uh, you know, we will know through practice whether or not uh, we have situations where uh, vacant structures have mature vegetation, for instance, that may or may not impede. Uh, but I would assume everything will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis when you're doing the inspections and, and uh, reporting to the property owner and the and, and, and we would us. have the staff reporting back to us in terms of what works, what doesn't work, mm -hmm. and then, uh, then we would be providing a status update to the, the elected body. So you're saying when the motion's made, we, we'll, uh, it should be made with the revisions discussed in work session? Now let's make sure Mayor and Council and all of us are clear. Yes. You've got some additional handouts here, correct? With some revisions from what was in the yes. packet Friday. This, this, well, so let's go through those. Are they okay. And are me? Are they correct? The what handouts. you got ahead of time, yeah. are, we made the revisions to the chapters that we're talking about tonight. What was handed out today, the motion sheet now says October 31st instead of October 30th and then the enacting um, ordinance, the two pages that precede the chapter, those were revised by the city attorney. This evening, if you're ready to move forward, we can hand, um, we can have the corrected page that has on the residential program, just talks about the apartment complexes for multiple structure properties. And on the non-residential side, just talks about shopping centers and pad sites. So essentially you're talking about striking a few words right. in each of the ordinances. Mm -hmm. On the first them. page of each chapter. And, and, and we can walk let's, through let's, uh, each chapter and... I struck it out on the ones that I have. Okay. If you go to the first page, you know, you get past the two-page enacting part. And if you go to the first page of, say, Chapter 233, which is vacant residential, in G, on the fourth line, it would, what would strike out is shopping centers with pad sites or... And then in H... On the third line, we would strike out shopping centers with pad sites or. Because this is the residential right. ordinance. And then if you switched over to the chapter 232, which is the non-residential ordinance, again, get past the enacting part, get to the first page of the chapter on H, the one, two, three, four, fifth line, or the fourth line down, you would strike out or apartment complexes and on I and the third line, you would strike out or apartment complexes. And that's it. Mm -hmm. No other changes. Right. Because what you received in the packet for today already had the changes that were in the memo. This is a typo correction. So for the 7 o'clock meeting, we'll get the revised yes. version yes. of that. Okay. And these motion statements are updated with the dates. Right. So these are good motion statements. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to make this comment. I've spent a great deal of time looking at this. And uh, I think uh, the changes that were made were very responsive to the questions that had been asked and um, helpful to the situation. Now, it's, it's, it's possible uh, that this is the perfect piece of legislation, but I doubt it. So we're going to be coming back here every week uh, so we can correct it if it's not the perfect piece of legislation. Um, and I think as you just said, John, that if there are changes that are required, you're going to ask us to make them. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Any other questions, feedback? I think we're, we're still scheduled to vote on it tonight. I'm assuming we still have the, at least a majority. So. All right. Uh, at this time, I uh, will entertain a motion to go into executive session for the two reasons stated on the agenda, to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice and to consider a matter, matter that concerns the proposal of a business industrial organization to locate, expand, or remain in the state. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of going into executive session, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. No. We will go into executive session shortly. And I believe upstairs, is that correct? So we'll reconvene on the fourth We're floor. We're going upstairs? Okay. Good evening, everybody. We're going to call this meeting to order. This is our 51st regular session. 
Uh, I would ask that you stand as you are able for the invocation, uh, followed by the pledge to the flag. We gather today here today <clears throat> intent on doing good work. We seek to represent fairly and well those who have given us this task. May our efforts be blessed with insight, guided by understanding and wisdom. We seek to serve with respect for all. May our personal faiths give us strength to act honestly and well in all matters before us. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Announcements, we will be operating under the rules of procedure adopted September 24th, 2013. Use of cell phones during meetings is restricted. All correspondence for distribution to elected officials should be provided to the city clerk and should include a copy for the city clerk for inclusion in the official record. And just to cover our October meeting schedule, uh, we will have four o'clock work sessions on Tuesday the 7th, 14th and 21st and a regular session at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, October 28th. So at this time, I would like to invite our guests this evening uh, to make a presentation. Mr. Kiefer. Thank you, Mayor the opportunity to be here members of the City Council we've pretty much come full circle it was one year ago tomorrow that we had the folks from Hagerstown Indiana here and we did the reading of the proclamation here I had the opportunity to venture out to Indiana make that seven-hour trip on Interstate 70 and in one right-hand turn um, during the week of October the 16th. I had an absolutely wonderful time, met a lot of wonderful people. I described Hagerstown, Indiana before I left with my research as being a Norman Rockwell painting. While I was out there, I was interviewed by a gentleman from the, their new local newspaper, and I said, I have to rephrase that a little bit. I said, this is a ever going painting that's not completed yet, and every person that I've met since I've been here is another image in this. Uh, it's that type of place where you want to be, where you want to spend time. Uh, it's just absolutely wonderful. I met with uh, their educators. I met with uh, business folks. I met with their politicians. Um, I could stand here before you this evening and talk for hours, but I know you folks have work to do, so I'm going to limit it. I brought with me a couple of different things, and then I'll make some follow-up comments. Um, two documents that I have, bear with me while I read them. The first document that was presented to me was a proclamation declaring August 16th, 2014 as Hagerstown, Maryland Day, a day of appreciation. Whereas brave pioneers of the early 19th century ventured westward from the city of Hagerstown, Maryland to discover lush land along the Nettle Creek Valley in the new state of Indiana's Wayne County, and whereas these travelers, confident their hopes for prosperity in the West would be fulfilled in this beautiful land, they named their settlement Hagerstown. And whereas Hagerstown, Maryland, remains a distinguished city and the county seat of Washington County, Maryland. And whereas the 39,662 residents of Hagerstown, Maryland have joined with the 1,769 citizens of Hagerstown, Indiana to form a sisterhood of cities. And whereas these sister cities will build friendships of mutual benefit to both Hagerstowns in the years to come. And whereas Mike Kiefer, a modern traveler and ambassador from Hagerstown, Maryland, appears this date to celebrate this kinship and now therefore be it resolved that the Wayne County Board of Commissioners do proclaim August 16th, 2014, Hagerstown, Maryland Day. 
a day of appreciation throughout Wayne County, Indiana. We encourage all citizens to show appreciation for the recognition of Hagerstown, Maryland, nearly 200 years ago and still today, for the important contributions made to Wayne County. Therefore, we, the undersigned members of the Wayne County Board of Commissioners of Wayne County, Indiana, have hereunto us set our hands and caused our county seal to be affixed the 16th day of August 2014, signed by Dennis Burns, Meredith Paulst, and Mary Ann Butters, commissioners. Very nice. The second proclamation, Sister City Partnership of Hagerstown, Maryland, and Indiana. Whereas the city of Hagerstown, Maryland, and the town of Hagerstown, Indiana, share the same name and a shared history, and whereas the town of Hagerstown, Indiana wishes to continue to forge the sister city relationship with our elder sister in Maryland, which began on October 1st, 2013. Now, therefore, we welcome Hagerstown, Maryland resident Michael Kiefer to Hagerstown, Indiana for the purpose of continuing our relationship in all areas of interest, including cultural, economic, educational, supportive, and general friendship. Set forth the 16th day of August in the year 2014 by the Town Council of Hagerstown, Indiana. So on behalf of the folks from Hagerstown, Indiana, to our fine folks here in Hagerstown with our city government and mayor, I'd like to present these to you. Thanks, Mike, and I just want to say thank you for taking the initiative and uh, making this happen. I think Aaron's probably going to want to get a photograph okay. here, so maybe you hold that one and... Let me get rid of these. I'll look better around. All right, on three. One, two, three. Little one, one, two, three. All right. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Mike. You're very welcome. Appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you at the dinner table. You bet. Thank you. A couple other Please. comments. I also put together two official sister city visitor registers. I took one with me out there. Actually, I took them both with me out there. I had the folks from Indiana that were here last year sign the one, and I brought this one back. Uh, when the folks come here next month, the new town manager and his wife, they'll be the next folks to sign this one. I signed the one out there. So this one's going to be give, given to the visitor center. Anybody from uh, that area, uh, they'll be signing the book, and we'll see what happens with that. Okay, now in closing, I'll make a couple of comments and then I need a, another presentation. As a member of the Alsatia Club, I was asked by our president, Karen Luther, to extend an invita invitation to their new town manager who was just placed in office about the day before I got there. A gentleman by the name of Chris Lamar. Bob Warner has since moved on to another job within the county. So Chris took over the reins as uh, the new town manager. So he and his wife, Ruthie, accepted my invitation to come here to be part of the Alsatia Parade. And hopefully we're going to have our mayor and their town manager riding together in the parade. So that'll show a, uh, a, a brotherhood of kinship between the two of them. Uh, I'm having a uh, welcoming dinner on the 24th at 28 South at 6 o'clock. Uh, Jay has offered to uh, comp the meals for our visitors. Uh, I have approximately, I have about 20 people right now who have told me they're going to come for the dinner. Uh, that's opened up to anybody else that might want to be there to uh, welcome our new friends. So that being said, uh, I'll go on to uh, my, my final remarks. While I was there, <clears throat> I was presented with a lot of really nice souvenirs and mementos that I brought back with me. Mary Ann Butters, who was one of the county commissioners, I met her and her husband, uh, her husband Tom. Tom is a historian with their Hagerstown Museum, and he's also a fine artist. Hagerstown, Indiana is known for the longest, longest grass runway in the United States. Because of that, they have a fly-in every year that bring in all these single prop planes. And Tom, every year, does a painting to promote that event. So he did one for this year, and they were kind enough and gracious enough to present this year's painting to me, 
which I brought back with me. The problem being, <clears throat> the wife and I live in a small house, and we don't have the room to put it up. And I thought, what should I do with this? Well, Hagerstown having the aviation history that it does, and us having a brand new library, I thought that's where it needs to go. Uh, so I've asked for Pat Wisher to be here as a representative from the library. Uh, now, I know they have protocol within the library where they will make a determination whether or not they will hang it in the library. If for some reason they choose not to do that, uh, it will end up in the Aviation Museum. Either way, it will be viewed by hundreds and hundreds of people not hanging in a, in a corner wall at my house. So on behalf of the citizens of Hagerstown, Indiana, and Mr. Tom Butters, I would like to present this painting oh, nice. to the Washington County Library. Hey, that's pretty neat. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for the time this evening. Thank you, Mr. Kiefer. At this time, we will move into citizen comments. Do we have a, the list from the clerk? Sorry. Thank you. Just to remind everybody, the citizen comments are limited to five minutes per individual. Meetings are televised and recorded. Your comments will be on air and on tape and on YouTube. And the first person to sign up to speak is Mr. Jan Hyatt. If you don't mind, please uh, say your name and address for the record when you, when you come up. And I have a little timer here that will help me keep track and be fair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council members. My name is Jan Hyatt, 921 Dewey Avenue, Hagerstown, Maryland. As you probably recall, I was here last month. My goal at that time was to have the council and mayor to review the uh, curfew law ordinance that's an issue and in fact the uh, times in particular that are a great concern to me and um, ask that you consider modifying that ordinance to reflect a more reasonable hour not 11 and 12 o'clock my understanding is that you reviewed this and elected to change the age instead of the times I'm not sure if that's the right direction but I'll defer to you but I will say this I have reviewed my little speech last time and also your response to it in the curfew ordinance update and strategy session and um, be honest with you we're not on the same page that is for sure but I will say this that the city police chief made it very clear and the quote was, we do have a governmental interest in controlling our juveniles. Now, I'm going to first thank the mayor and Councilwoman Nye for showing up, along with three police officers and a representative from the state's attorney's office, to a little neighborhood meeting we had a couple Fridays ago out at the Antietam uh, Fire Hall, about 6.30 on a Friday, not your ideal time. This started out with the idea that a few of us on Dewey Avenue who are tired of the uh, criminal activity and the loss of our um, quality of life uh, wanted to meet with police officers and determine what we could do to help each other to improve these issues and to air our concerns. And the further I went to talk to people, the more people said, you need to talk to somebody else on another block. And pretty soon it got carried away. And then, of course, Nancy Allen got contacted, involved in this. And we know where that happens when Nancy Allen gets involved in something. There were over 150 people attending there. And I think I can speak for the people that were there. And hopefully you'll agree with me. There were a lot of angry and disappointed people at that meeting. And they're disappointed because of what is going on in our neighborhoods. And the words that I heard frequently, besides dope dealing, were the words that I'm concerned about. 
and they were hoodlums, young thugs, punks, juvenile delinquents. And the issue, again, is the time. 11 and 12 o'clock is not an appropriate time for 15 and under to be out in the community roaming around doing what they, they want to do. It's simply not an appropriate time. And I'm concerned because those of you that were there heard people say, I'm on my porch cleaning my gun. We had several questions to state's attorneys. When in Maryland, where in Maryland, under what circumstance in Maryland, can I shoot somebody? Is this good citizenship? Is this good leadership from the mayor and council? Is this good policing? I think not. This scares me to death. Somebody is going to get hurt. We have women going down and they're videotaping dope deals. We have people chasing after people. We need to address this issue. The time is the issue. And you can, you can say what about the age, whatever you want. The time is truly an issue with me because it's way too late. And, you know, we, we, we talk about enforcement and we try to get to the root cause of this juvenile delinquency. And you know what? The bottom line is it's the parents that are to be responsible and the children are to be held responsible for the actions. And they need to be helped by the mayor and council because the time is wrong. You can't expect irresponsible people to set more reasonable goals than what you set. That would be no more likelihood than saying the speed limit at the school zone is 65 mile an hour, we're going to enforce it. People are going to get hurt, right? The same thing with this thing. When you set the bar so low that the, that the parents don't have to do anything to take care of their kids, you're not going to get anything. All I'm asking that you do is you set a reasonable curfew. The police have the discretion to take care of this. Councilman Oshauer pointed to this out that this happens all the time. Police have discretion to, to take care of this. I'm not talking about kids playing games in the neighborhood. You know, the police officers know what type of people we're looking for. They're the ones that steal cars and run into old ladies down here later on. They're people that are out late at night and nobody bothered reporting them because the bottom line is that's the standard in Hagerstown. 11 to 12 o'clock is okay for juveniles to be out running around. And I find it not acceptable. I hope you would take my words of advice before somebody gets hurt. I've never said anything about handcuffing people. I never said about kids walking in one door and out the other. I never mentioned anything about uh, uh, increasing the age. That's the chief's idea, but we need to fix the curfew thing, and it's the time. Thank you kindly. Appreciate that. And if there was one takeaway that I had from that meeting in the neighborhood, it was that if you see something, you have to say something. Absolutely. So and I, we don't and want people taking the law into their own hands. We certainly don't. That scares uh, so me and, terribly. Uh, but it scares me to hear people say, well, I shouldn't have to call the police uh, because I don't, I, I heard that several times yes. from folks and yes, that's just not the case. We need people to call the police if there's something suspicious happening or if you believe there's criminal activity, whether it's in front of you in the street in the middle of the day down here in, in downtown or in your neighborhood or in any neighborhood. You're exactly correct. The police Peter. have got that, that's, to be called. That's, that was a common thing that I heard, but I will say this, I, I was disappointed if you, if you give me just a half a second here in that there were some people in Mealy Parkway, not to pick on, but I, I knew the, who these people were, and, and they were saying, well, you know, they've gotten good police response. You know, they got mm -hmm. police response in three minutes. And you know what, that's great. I, you know, police response, most of the time for me, has been pretty decent also. But I'll say this, the sad part about it is that years ago, is maybe recent as four or five years ago, we didn't have to make those phone calls. Mm -hmm. I'm a half, empty type of guy when it comes to glasses. Mm -hmm. And it's not that the police response is great, it's a shame that people on a street like Mealy Parkway or Irvin Avenue have to be calling the police at all mm -hmm. because it used not to happen. It's a quality of life thing. Mm -hmm. It's something that you all can take care of. And I wish you would address the time because the time, 11 and 12 o'clock is not right. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Heather Gesford. Don't mind. State your name and address for the record, please. Heather Gesford, 920 The Terrace. Um, good evening. Most of you know me on this panel, and you know that I'm, I'm never at a loss for words, so I'm going to apologize. I have to read from a script, or otherwise I'll keep you here all night. But I'm not here on board duty service this evening. I'm actually here as a homeowner and a landlord. I recently gave up my um, 
childhood home. It was the most beautiful historic house you could ever possibly see. Um, and I gave it up because it was in the worst neighborhood. It used to be a great neighborhood, and I lived there for 30 plus years, and that's North Cannon Avenue, um, not too far from Dewey. So I just wanted to first start by thanking um, our friends, the law enforcement officers of the city of Hagerstown, um, recognizing Chief Holtzman, thank you for your service, and thank you for what you do. I know our law enforcement agencies are already stretched so thin by being asked to do always more and never less. Unfortunately, this neighborhood, again, North Cannon Avenue, with so much potential, has become a melting pot or red zone according to crime statistics sites. As one of two gateways to our beloved fairgrounds and my childhood home, again, for 30 plus years, I'm afraid for what it's become and the families, friends, and neighbors that I've left behind. I recently moved into my new home on the terrace. I now carry two mortgages because I'm unable to sell my former childhood home, and not that I would ever want to, but no one would want to buy it at the same time. In a one block radius, and these were the statistics are alarming, I've been asked to report because of my position within this community from all of my neighbors and families that, again, is in a one block radius. This is North Cannon between Franklin and East Avenue. At my residence, and these are all recent separate occasions and occurrences, spray painting of my garage, spray painting of my utility poles next to my garage, theft of two different hanging flower pots. I know they're just a flat hanging flower pot, but if you come in day after day after day and something's constantly missing, it wears on you after a while. Mm -hmm. Theft of four birdhouses, four different occasions, four different birdhouses are stolen. Theft of a ceramic snowman. It's a $10 snowman, but it's still mine, and it's still my personal property. Theft of a five-piece wicker antique patio set that belonged to my great-grandmother. And this was pretty impressive because they took it all at the same time in broad daylight. We did have a witness that saw them carrying it down the street, but it's quite heavy. So kudos to them for wanting it that bad that they pulled that off. And most recently, what um, encouraged me to move, and I moved rather quickly because I bought a house that I've had nothing but problems with, and if I wouldn't have been so rushed to move, I wouldn't have purchased this home. But I had two break-in attempts within a three-week period. Two in three weeks. One was in broad daylight at 10 a.m., and the second was in the evening at 9.30 while I was at home alone. That's really scary, and that's what finally pushed me over the edge. I have law enforcement in my family, which is why I have such great respect for Chief Holtzman and what his team does. But even they said they didn't know what else to do for me. What I've witnessed recently, I found needles, liquor bottles, and beer bottles behind my garage. I've also caught several people in the act of shooting up, which prompted me to install at my expense lotion, motion, rather, motion sensor lights in my alley surrounding the perimeter of my home. I witnessed a group of youth harassing an elderly man walking up the street, then spitting on him when they ignored him. The same youth threatened me for asking them to stop and leave this man alone. The same youth on their bicycles block our roads and they won't let us pass or they threaten us to hit them. At my tenant's home, which is a duplex, it's right directly beside mine, they've had a breaking and entering where they kicked in their back door, took their electronics, including their big screen television. Someone then, several weeks later, attempted to gain access to their living room window, which is on the alley side. And this house in reference is on the corner of the alley that um, directs from North Cannon to Mulberry Street, which is a high traffic, high problem alley. When I was a kid, I actually used to play in the alley until dark and it wasn't you know, an issue, but times they are changing. So in that same alley, they attempted to gain access to my tenant's living room only for his wife who was asleep on the couch um, because she couldn't fall asleep that night to actually catch them uh, about three or four o'clock in the morning. The same tenants, their vehicle was then stolen. That was parked on North Cannon and actually was not even in the alley, which is typically pretty dark. They have recovered needles as well from the landscaping of their flower beds that are again on the alley side. And again, daily removal of liquor, liquor bottles and other trash. My elderly neighbors to the left of my house, her glass storm, several, glass storm door several weeks, weeks ago was shattered with a golf ball. Her son's bike was stolen from her backyard where it was chained. Again, that's the neighbor to my left who is in her 70s. My elderly neighbor to her right who is again in her, her 70s, her mailbox was actually stolen twice. Her recycling bin was, is now dumped on a weekly basis in retaliation, in retaliation after catching the first group of youth from dumping it the first time. Now it's a habitual basis, so she has to wait for the garbage truck to set out her recycle bin. 
Last Tuesday, my grandfather's truck was broken into and ransacked. He was also threatened by a large group of teenagers for, that were loitering at the rental property directly across the street from him after he asked them to get off the rental property that he owned right beside their house as well as they were literally on the roof of the property that was empty at the time. Not sure what they were doing on the roof, but they were. The same group th threatened myself and my fiance when we arrived two days later, later for dinner when we found the same group of youth in the uh, yard of the same rental property and again they threatened us and we're in our 30s and he's kind of a big guy so they're pretty brazen um, the flowers were dripped uh, direct, ripped directly from their flower pots flower pots were stolen from their porch the wreath and porch mats were stolen twice Rotor rooters all the mirrors were busted out in their service vehicles at 128 North Cannon theft of a brand new chest freezer in broad daylight that was in their backyard by their basement door awaiting for movers to move it inside same property, theft of their back patio furniture. Moving up the street at 139, theft of his vehicle occurred just a few weeks ago. That was later recovered at Oak Ridge Apartments, I believe, or no, um, another apartment complex in town, but it was recovered in Hagerstown, uh, demolished. At 126 North Cannon, theft of the porch mat, theft of holiday decorations, theft of service flags, including uh, marine flags and USA flags. Theft of their deck furniture in their backyard. At 122, vehicle was broken into and vandalized and later ransacked a second time. At 119, again, that's 119, theft of their front porch furniture. This happened two weeks ago. Numerous reports of suspicious activity in the lot behind their home. At 118, wallet was stolen from a locked vehicle. Theft of, again, more porch mats and more deck furniture. 116, youths hitting air conditioners with such force, twice this happened, that it actually collapsed through their windows. Theft of porch equipment, theft of porch mat, theft of deck furniture. The corner of Cannon Avenue and Franklin, this also happened on two separate occasions to the same uh, storm window. It was shattered with a lar large object suspected to be a baseball bat. Uh, so again, the same window, same glass window, shattered twice. On a daily ba basis, we deal with trash, ruckus, fighting from the excursions, as we call it, the Sheets and McDonald's Expressway. Typically, it's youth far late into the night when they shouldn't be out, when they should have been home hours ago. On any given Saturday, you will see me still returning to my childhood neighborhood to try to polish it up, filling up uh, trash bags. On, ev on average, every Saturday morning, I fill up two uh, kitchen garbage, ba garbage bags full of trash. What's causing these offenses? Uh, residents with barriers, such as substance abuse addictions, typically coming from those uh, or resulting in offenses such as theft, mental health problems, prisoners' re-entry and recidivism, breakdown in family structure of our youth. You know, we are obviously we're not asking anybody here in the city to be to parent, but rather hold the parents more accountable and make it more uncomfortable for them to let these children uh, do these offenses and run the streets and 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 cause the ruckus that they're doing. Um, we have two known pretty major um, offender apartments as they're known on North Cannon, one on the corner of Franklin and North Cannon and one closer to the fairground side. There's a lot of activity there that's um, resulting from property management companies not being responsible landlords when they're uh, placing these tenants and screening, screaming them, screening them. I told you guys I was trying to be quick, so I apologize for this. Um, what I'm asking you to consider, and again, I know we are all strapped so thin, but an inc increased police presence, door-to-door -door introductions, a lot of the elderly neighbors to my left, to my right, my grandfather, they're not reporting it because they don't know um, that this is something that they want them to report. They feel like they're causing more of a burden or that we're not going to do anything about it. So I'm begging them, please, you have to you have to report it because Chief Holtzman won't know to allocate people to that area unless you keep, um, keep calling. More cameras. We have one camera that is on the corner of Cannon, um, North Cannon and South Cannon Dual Highway right there by CVS and one as far up by Jefferson Street and then two outside the fairgrounds. I'm um, asking for consideration for a camera on the corner of North and East Avenue, which again is a hot hotbed area and preferably in the alleys. That alley from North Cannon to Mulberry Street, I've witnessed numerous raids in those yards and the backs of those houses back there, um, drug bust, you know, fights, you name it. Enhanced lighting in our alleys. Um, I know this has um, occurred in other neighborhoods, and again, I've put up at my own expense um, motion lights, but it's just not enough. The alleys, especially behind my garage, are extremely, extremely dark, and it's not safe. I'm actually in fear when I would get home, typically very late at night, from events such as these, and literally have to watch my back just going into the house. Um, earlier curfew for youth. Uh, the gentleman from Dewey Avenue touched on this. Again, um, you know, 11 o'clock at night on a school night, um, it, it's, it seems a little seems a little late. Um, 
very simply another trash can um, up in the middle of the 100 block rather than just by Ritter Rooter. Um, again, as most of you know, I'm going to close with this, but I'm a bleeding heart for this community. <laughs> I embrace and I welcome changing the changing demographic or a face of Hagerstown for citizens who want to keep advancing Hagerstown as a destination for other like-minded residents and professionals that contribute positively to impacting us. Unfortunately, as my work with Goodwill shows, citizens with barriers to employment, housing, or other resources, prisoner reentry, recidivism, and other challenges in this community is what's breaking um, down the social structure in our in our neighborhoods. Um, we are actively working with these clients at the Goodwill to help them, you know, overcome these barriers, whether it's mental health, substance abuse, housing, or whatever the case may be. But we need to do everything we can and bring awareness to it at this council that this cannot turn into Little Baltimore. And this is what our clients at Goodwill are calling it, Little Baltimore. So we need to bring awareness to, and we love downtown so much, and I love downtown, but it's more than just that. So we need to look at allocating resources to the Dewey Avenues, the Mulberry Streets, the North Cannons of the world. Um, I'm your target homeowner. I'm your target renter. I have expendable income. I'm a working professional and I'm scared. You know, I, I gave up my home and that's where it's, it really got to a critical point for me. Um, you know, and I left behind my grandparents, my parents, and an aunt who, and friends that are all on their own now. So again, I wanted to thank you for your time this evening. I apologize if I ran over, um, but if we can just get some attention outside, you know, of what we focus on so much in our core and maybe to some of these underlying neighborhoods before we do lose, you know, good tenants and do good homeowners and good renters. So thank you again. I welcome further dialogue. Most of you know how to reach me, um, and I appreciate your time this evening. Thanks, Heather. We'll certainly follow up with the chief and address some of those concerns that you rightfully raise. The next uh, person to sign up is Michael Stamford. Michael Stanford, 12709 Bradbury Avenue, Smithsburg. Um, good evening, Mayor, Council, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here this evening to discuss monies owed to me by the city of Hagerstown. July 1st of this year, I was able to entice two police officers to move into my building on the first block of East Antietam Street. By using two stackable programs the city had in place, I have spent the last three months trying to collect the money the city owes me. In response to inquiries, which included asking a council member for help, I was then given this letter, which all of you have been copied on. This letter is offensive. Not only does it, treat, not only does it tread on my right to do business, it threatens me with being barred from all city programs in the future. I have dealt in good faith over the last 18 months to put an officer downtown. not only to help my building, but to help the neighborhood. That was the whole point of these programs. This letter is retaliatory and infringes upon my rights. Shame on the city for allowing this. The city has put me in a position where I have no choice but to seek legal action if this injustice is not corrected. It is time for the city to do what is right and correct this issue immediately. Thank you. Well, let me just respond by saying you decided to bring this issue into a public forum. Uh, but, you know, it was well documented. You took myself, Councilmember Alshar, on a tour of that building. Uh, you told us that you were willing to supplement the city's incentives to uh, try to attract uh, police officers to live downtown and for that I give you a lot of credit that as a, a landlord a property owner that you're willing to uh, make that kind of commitment the issue has to do with fair market rent and I think you know that that's the issue uh, and and I think the issue at hand is that uh, there is a concern that quite frankly you're trying to defraud the city of Hagerstown by charging a rent that is not market value so that's the bottom line here Mr. Stanford and I'm not intending on getting in a, in a debate here then in a why public did you, forum. Why, if you were going to... But you came here to this meeting to address this issue, so this I'm, issue laying, out, about rent. So this I'm rent, laying out the facts the for facts people are, to know. Neither one of those programs talk about rent, not a single one. If you have questions about rent and whether it's a fair market value or market rate, so let's understand the terms, then bring me in next Tuesday and ask me some questions and I'll be more than happy to educate you on those things in a public forum. 
This issue was Thank not you. about what the rents were or were not. It was a subsidy for an officer to live downtown and to and, and provide a presence. And we will continue presence. to support our officers in the city center residency initiative. And we will continue to work with property owners who are uh, in good faith supporting that effort as well. Uh, but the bottom line is you were trying to collect more in incentives than what the value of that apartment was. And in order to account for that, it seems to me, and based on the information given to me, that you increase the rent in order to keep that from being the case. That you would be collecting more money in assistance and an incentive than would be the fair market value of the rent. Did you or anyone else ever ask me to explain it? I don't need you to ask to explain it. There is an article in Tuesday, December 3rd, 2013, Herald Mail, where you said the rents were 735 to 695 per month. Okay. And then we see a spreadsheet that says you want to charge almost $1,100 a month. So, so you do so want I to do don't this. understand now, now the that discrepancy. You brought, if you wish to go through that, I'd be more than happy to go through it with you, Mayor. Well, make an appointment. I'd be glad to sit. No, down. we'll do this in public because you you have oh, that's okay. you have now that's okay. You have now said something now. derogatory towards me in public. It's all it's all recorded. It's all on the record. And it's all on the record that what that I'm charging eight ninety a month to these officers. That's not what the lease says. Absolutely, it is. You need to reread it. I did and read, read it the carefully. Lease. I did read the lease. That's not what it says. So I'm sorry we're going to have to disagree on this one. Okay. Well, thank you for your I time. I appreciate your comments. I see no more names signed up on, for citizen comments. Is there anyone who did not sign up who would wish to speak? Seeing none, we will move on in our agenda. City administrator's comments. Just one, which is uh, similar to prior years. Uh, next Thursday, October 9th, city employees will be participating in the United Way Day of Caring projects. Just wanted to mention that. We're pleased to have them participate in that program. That's it for me. Council comments. Who would like to begin? Ms. Nye? I just want to say thank you, Mr. Hyatt. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Debbie, Heather's mother, for coming in. This is what I tried to stress to council almost now, I guess, maybe a month ago, of the ongoing problems that we're having with juveniles. And I'm glad that it has finally now shown people that, yes, there are people who are having major problems. And I do appreciate you all coming in. Thank you. Mr. Munson. Uh, no comments, Mayor. Mr. Metzner. No. Hi, thank you. Mr. Brubaker. Enjoyed the thunder in the square Friday night. Brings back many memories for me, and it's always glad to see so many people downtown. Mr. Alshire. A couple of things. The first is, as well, uh, my father actually uh, he came down to thunder in the square, and I, I think that's probably the first time that, that I've <clears throat> been downtown with my father since. Uh, attending uh, soccer and basketball at the YMCA when it used to be uh, at the old YMCA. And uh, he remarked that it's the first time he can remember it like that since he was uh, of a generation that frequented downtown that would be that busy uh, on a Friday night. Um, also, uh, there's always the good and the bad. Uh, and I don't know how we follow up with this, and I'm not sure it's really our purview, but I was walking uh, the other night uh, down, I guess, uh, Lee Street, and there was a, an, an older lady that was set out uh, uh, from Potomac Towers. Uh, I believe it was 11 o'clock at night. Uh, her stuff strewn across the grass uh, uh, like it was a yard sale. Um, and I uh, happened to pass her and said, hey, you know, a little odd looking at 11 o'clock at night. She basically said, I'm set out. Um, and, and there really isn't an alternative to that. So I just found a little odd uh, scenario and not certain you know, how we deal with that when it occurs, but I'm not certain that's it. And uh, the third is um, we are going to approve an agreement later on for MELP. Uh, I think that that is a landmark uh, um, uh, um, uh, success uh, for this administration, as, as Council Member Munson often points out. And um, I think it speaks to that notion that uh, as a city, 
uh, if we sprinkle our um, uh, investment capabilities around uh, the entirety of our community uh, a bit at a time and a bit in each place, uh, I think we will achieve much greater success um, than, than, than the focus on a, a set and single uh, uh, issue. And I think we're starting to reap some of that uh, benefit. And um, the other is there's an open position on EDC. I think that come about because they've reduced the number of city representation. So I know they were looking for input uh, from the membership on that. Uh, I actually suggested that somebody uh, within the social services industry, uh, you know, that the EDC look at a person because that is a growing field uh, and, and one that does have an impact on our economic uh, viability uh, as a community. And um, in walking around uh, in the evening, uh, one thing that I do note is uh, there is a, a huge disparity in how our streets uh, in our urban core, our, our inner core, are lit uh, in the evening. And, and I think that that plays a significant role in um, the activity or level and types of activity that occur in the various blocks and what I'll call sort of our eight or ten block area of the core. And I think that, you know, while we start to look at some of these incentives and continue to look at some of these improvements, uh, that for me is one of those areas that I think will address uh, some, some of that issue. One I will note is uh, in walking over toward uh, Locust Street, as you get further, I guess, east in the downtown, uh, it gets a, a lot more dark uh, in the evening. Uh, just uh, the lighting just is not the same as, uh, as you go through the Southwest Quadrant. I think part of that is the fact that it is a much more densely uh, uh, residential area. There aren't as many open lots, there aren't as many large buildings, there aren't as much street setback, and so I think that we need to take that into account when we continue to look at uh, areas for improvement downtown. And the last is, um, the other thing I notice is, you know, it's interesting the degree to which we regulate uh, canines uh, in uh, our city. Uh, and the thing that I notice most is the number of cats that are running around at nighttime is, is astronomical. Um, it's, it's insane. I don't know if you see it in your neighborhoods, but uh, when you get around a uh, uh, park circle area, it's pretty significant. So I just wonder uh, if we provide the same level of, of sort of, uh, you know, follow up on that issue as, as we do uh, other pets. So. I would also like to thank the Alsatia Club and Karen Giffen and the city staff who helped uh, make Thunder in the Square such a success. I would only note that I did not see coverage uh, on the front page of the Herald Mail of 5,000 people gathered in the streets with no incidences, uh, but we did see a above the fold uh, headline on Sunday about downtown distractions. So I find it highly ironic the way the Herald Mail chooses to uh, editorialize by the fact that they choose stories and how they, uh, how they put those on the paper. Uh, I also want to congratulate the folks who put together the Out of the Darkness Walk. I think they had 700 people. Uh, at City Park on Saturday for suicide awareness and uh, the good work that they're doing uh, making that event a success and growing it every year. Uh, and just wanted to remind folks that tomorrow we'll be having a public meeting uh, to uh, get input on the what we call the A&E Trail, the trail that will connect uh, the city center with the city park. Uh, it starts at 5.30 at Park Circle with a walk along the proposed route of the trail. We'll end up at the library uh, at 6.30 for uh, the public input session. Uh, so I would invite everyone to, uh, I'm sorry, it's uh, here at 6.30 uh, for the public input session here in the council chambers. So 5.30 Park Circle, 6.30 here in council chambers. Uh, we're seeking any and all input on that project and we welcome everybody's uh, attendance. Uh, and with that, we will move on to the minutes. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move for the approval of minutes as presented for the Mayor and Council meetings held on August 12, 1926, all of 2014. Second. Motion made by Mr. Metzner, seconded by Mr. Brubaker. Any discussion? All those in favor of the approval of minutes, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say no. Ayes have it, and the minutes are approved. Next is the consent agenda. 
Mr. Mayor, I move that the consent agenda be approved as presented. Second. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I would re request that uh, item B2 be uh, taken out of the consent agenda and put at the end. I intend to uh, vote for item B2 at the end, but I would like to make a couple of comments if I could. Okay, so the request is to remove the network cameras? Correct. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. We'll amend my motion as uh, suggested. The motion has been amended. Is there second. a second on the amended second. motion? The second is there. Any further discussion? Let me just make sure I pull the right one out here. Thank you. Got it. All right. The motion is uh, made by Mr. Alshire, seconded by Mr. Metzner. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Ayes have it. And the remaining items on the consent agenda are agreed to. Uh, at this point, we will do unfinished business. Item A, approval of an ordinance amending Chapter 173. Mr. Mayor, have I moved Mayor and Council approval of an ordinance to amend Chapter 173, Section 1736, Peace and Good Order of the City Code. This amendment would remove the public drunkenness language. Future charges regarding disorderly intoxication types of complaints shall be charged under the appropriate sections of the Maryland Code. Second. Motion made by Mr. Alshire, seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Ayes have it. Motion is agreed to. Item B, under unfinished business, approval of an ordinance, Chapter 25-1. Mayor, hereby move for Mayor and Council approval of an ordinance to amend Chapter 25, Section 25-1, drug-free school zone map of the city code. This amendment would reflect the changes in the city's school boundaries with the addition of the Barbara Ingram School for the Arch downtown. Second. Motion made by Mr. Brubaker, second by Mr. Mensner. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Ayes have it, and the motion is approved. Item C, the approval of an ordinance, Chapter 70, Cable Television and Open Video Systems. Mr. Mayor, have I moved that the attached ordinance introduced on August 26, 2014 be approved to amend the city code to add a new Chapter 70 entitled Cable System Ordinance? Second. Motion made by Mr. Alshire, seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Ayes have it, and the ordinance is approved. Item D, approval of an ordinance, the Antietam Cable Franchise Agreement. Mr. Mayor, have I moved the attached ordinance introduced on August 26, 2014, be approved to authorize the City of Hagerstown to enter into a cable television franchise agreement with the Antietam Cable Television, Inc. Second. Motion made by Mr. Alshire, seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? I just want to thank staff and uh, our attorneys and our consultants who put in countless hours working through this uh, very detailed product. So thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Ayes have it, and the ordinance is approved. Item E is the approval of an ordinance, Catalyst Project Number 8, amending Chapter 232. Mr. Mayor, hereby move for the Mayor and City Council to adopt an ordinance to amend the Code of the City of Hagerstown, Chapter 232, Vacant Commercial Structure. Specifically, the amendments will apply the ordinance throughout the city, amend the license fee charging, a higher amount on blighted vacant structures, implement a registration and inspection schedule, which establishes the first priority of blighted vacant structures, require a certificate of property insurance, establish certain crime prevention through environmental design standards. These amendments are consistent with the city's vision and commitment for housing and neighborhoods and the community's city center plan. Second. Motion made by Mr. Alshire and seconded by Ms. Nye. Any discussion? Uh, just a note on uh, these two items. Um, as everyone's aware, I've had some concern with them. Uh, I will tell you that uh, it pays to participate in these public processes. 
uh, because uh, just hearing the comments this evening were enough to tip the scale for me to remain consistent with this council in enforcing these types of improvements to our regulatory process uh, on these types of, of instances in our community. So I'm in favor. Excellent. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed, say no. The ordinance is adopted. Uh, next up is the approval of an ordinance, Catalyst Project Number 8, amending Chapter 232. I'm sorry, 233. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move for the Mayor and City Council to adopt an ordinance to amend the code of the City of Hagerstown, Chapter 233, vacant residential structures. Specifically, the amendments will. One, amend the license fee to charge a higher amount for blighted vacant structures. Two, implement a registration and inspection schedule which establishes blighted vacant structures as the first priority. Three, require a certificate of, proper, of property insurance. Four, establish certain crime prevention through environmental design standards. These amendments are consistent with the city's vision and commitment for housing and neighborhoods and the community center city plan. Second. Motion made by Ms. Nye and seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. The ordinance is adopted. That brings us to new business. Introduction of an ordinance, item A, amending city code chapter 79. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move for mayor and council introduction of an ordinance to amend chapter 79 of the city code curfew for juveniles. This amendment would revise the definition of a juvenile to include persons under the age of 17. Second. Motion made by Mr. Brubaker, seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, I have Sir. a comment. Um, I'm going to vote for this. I support it. But I'm uh, also going to ask the chief of police if he will um, review uh, the age issue that we heard uh, about this evening and uh, come back to us in six months and let's rediscuss that and see if we need to, uh, to amend this further, please. With, the sh with sheets closing in the north end, that may make, may make some difference out there. I don't know. Okay. It probably won't. Uh, around the dual highway, but no, um, I think it's worth reviewing uh, in the not too distant future. Mr. Mayor, with, with regards to that, I, I'm not so sure that six months is the appropriate time period. I, 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 we, we discussed the issue of age. I don't think we really discussed the issue of time. Uh, right. I, I think put that at the earliest work session possible. Yeah. Um, I, I would prefer to take a perspective quite candidly of changing it and finding out if it does anything than doing nothing and finding out if we need to make a change. Um, I agree. Okay, so what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting we get in a work session as soon as possible. Okay, I don't have any problem with that. Well, we could do this as introduction. Yeah, we're just going to introduce Yeah, I was going to say, this is... Oh, I understand that, that. That was my philosophy, no, Lou, to be honest. I guess I didn't um, make it clear, but this is an introduction, so... We'll have another work session. We can decide to amend this and still approve it. And then adopt it. And yep. We'll work with so the, I, I was. The clerk and get no, the I think we all felt that way, Council. Yeah, I, I just wasn't making a big deal of it. I think it's an introduction. When, when we do bring this back for discussion, I would be interested to see what the parameters are as it applies to the parents' obligations. In other words, we talk about the ordinance and as it applies, how are you going to apply it to the youth that it's affected? Uh, but I'd be interested to see right. what the enforcement process as it applies to the parental obligations if it is violated. Right. And also, if we're going to have this discussion, it would be nice to know what happens after, if there are charges, right. what happens with the juvenile justice system and that whole process so that everybody is aware of, you know, the city's role and what isn't the city's role in that whole process. And the answer to that question is pretty simple. It's almost zero, okay? I mean, let's have no misunderstanding. The juvenile justice system in the city of Hagerstown, other than our input through the appropriate staff to the courts and the state's attorney's office, is zero. And if anybody thinks that the courts, the juvenile court system, is going to look at curfew violations as something that is going to create 
a lot of happening in the juvenile system, they're wrong. Okay. So it could be that perhaps we bring the chief and the director of Department of Juvenile Services in to well, this conversation. It, it, bringing them in is a very good thing to do, but they're going to tell you what I'm telling you because they're going to tell you the same thing I'm telling you. It, it starts at the state level, but that doesn't take away the necessity to give the police the power to do what they need to do. Uh, and unfortunately, and I think Mr. Hyatt knows it, when the system will start doing something about these juveniles is probably the third or fourth time that they come before the system, not the third or fourth time they have a, an interaction with the police. Having said that, um, it would be very interesting to see if that enforcement tool would be beneficial. Quite candidly, I, I think that standing alone is not going to do what needs to be done. However, Things that have been said tonight, both up here and down there collectively, I think would have a great effect. And, and that we're talking about lighting. I think lighting is, is just totally essential. I think we have learned uh, in the North End, which is the one who, who probably has the most, uh, we're learning very much our decision uh, to not engage in our alleys with lighting or other methods is nothing but a place for for criminals to hang out uh i commend the chief i know that we have a an officer assigned to, to our district um they go through every alley i see them when they come through our neighborhood but but i think there's a combination of, of lighting of curfew and the last one which i think is the keystone to them all which i'm assuming we're going to hear from Council Member Munson talk about later on is cameras. It's um, right. It, it seems like those three together may give give us a much greater effect than any one individually. Any other comments? Yes, I do. Ms. Nye? Because I could just get up and kiss every one of these men sitting here because I only brought this up when and I was screaming, <laughs> was I not chief when I said we need to do something about the juveniles and it's got to be the time frame. It's got to be the parents. And it wasn't until we had another group in here and I called to a group, okay, the daughter and the mother, that now my councilmen have listened. Thank you very much because something does have to happen. And Lou, I do understand at the state level, we are fighting a fight. But, but it's got to take place. When I, we are being overrun. Mr. Elshire. That's why I'd like to hear about what we can do as, as a part of our internal controls. In other words, we talk about crime prevention. Uh, we talk about, you know, registration. What I heard here this evening is, you know, it, it's an issue in this particular case of uh, property management entities. And, uh, you know, we talk about the, the qualifying call process we just uh, implemented. You know, uh, you know, it, three uh, juvenile violations may qualify as one qualifying call, something to that effect that allows us some type of internal control process uh, that lets the property managers know they can't be bad property managers and lets the parents know that, you know, they can be bad parents, just not in our community. Uh, and, you know, and, and we've resolved to some degree that way. Yes, Mr. Munson. I, I just want to say, Mr. Hyatt, uh, we appreciate your coming back tonight to to bring this issue before us, and I thank you for your, for your perseverance. Uh, this mayor and council are not insensitive to what you want. We all live in the community. Uh, I've lived in my house off and on on Magnolia Avenue since 1954. It wasn't until last summer when my car was broken into the first time and my glove, glove box rifled and I lost some, some things that were very valuable to me. Um, including a parking pass I had in Annapolis uh, that uh, I could have used, uh, but no more, because it disappeared. Uh, so uh, I think uh, you will find that this mayor and council are gonna do what we can. But this is really an incredible, I don't have to tell you, you know, you've had a lifetime of experience. This is really an incredibly difficult issue. Hopefully well, the, sh the closing of sheets, <clears throat> which is gonna be for better or for worse, I'm not quite sure, but at least it'll cut out the Sheets Express in, in, the, in that part of Hagerstown. So it might help in that regard. I think we should go back to what the mayor said. Uh, I was sitting here thinking 
and I know what happens, as Councilman Metzner said, in the juvenile justice system, and how for, no matter how efficient the police are, no matter how tough we might be in, in these programs, if we throw these kids at a system that throws them back, these kids just laugh at it. Yeah. They have no respect. And if we can't f get an edge or get some support there, it really makes it tough. So I think the mayor has hit on something. If we can get them here talking about it, maybe we can get somewhere. Maybe we can get somewhere down in Annapolis. But it, it's, you know, it, it really creates a rough situation because I know what those kind of kids and how they think. And they're just going to laugh at it if they know they're going to bounce back every time. And my, my point being, though, is simply this. If the only offense they're coming to the juvenile system for is a curfew violation, nothing is ever going to happen. I mean, and that that's my point. I mean, it's a different story. If, if we can well, catch yes. these juveniles actually committing the crimes that have been described to us tonight, that's one thing. But but if the only thing the police are charging with is a curfew violation with nothing else to support any other criminal activity these those cases in my opinion and the chief can tell me if he disagrees and so can mr boyer i don't think those cases until you're at the fourth or fifth violation would ever even see the courtroom uh, they never even get to a court they would be resolved in, in what's called informal adjustments of juvenile services um and it's just a matter of that's the way it is in the juvenile and system. and you're making my point that, that's exactly my point point. and what makes the parents accountable somewhere the parents have got to come into it time for another discussion indeed uh, and yet we have the question on the table yes. the motion made by mr brubaker seconded by mr metzner on the introduction of the ordinance I'll call for the yeas and nays. All those in favor of the introduction of this ordinance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. No. And we will get this on a work session very soon for further consideration. Uh, next up is item B, approval of a resolution, approval of the release and settlement agreement between the City of Hagerstown and Partners Marketing, LLP. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move that the Mayor and City Council, everybody wants to do this one, but I got lucky. The Mayor, <laughs> mayor and City Council approve the attached resolution for the approval of the release and settlement agreement between the City of Hagerstown and Parents Marketing, LLP. The associated expenditure of $650,000 is for the purchase of the MELP and a contribution for remediation of contaminants uh, upon the property. The MELP property contains 2.9633 acres as recorded by the Washington County uh, Land Records at Platte Book number 3988. The release and settlement agreement funding will be accomplished through a future bond request. Second. Motion made by Mr. Munson, seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? I'll just f further the councilman's comments. We should have read this one together. Right. We should have. Everybody <laughs> wanted this one. <laughs> but thanks, Doc. I just wanted to point out that this agreement will uh, end the legal action, so it will settle the eminent domain proceedings that were started earlier this year, uh, just to clarify that point. Oh, and and at the end of the day, in hindsight, there will, th there will be those that certainly see the uh, uh, giving away of this property for a dollar by some previous administration as a uh, very unintelligent act uh, now that we're buying it back for 650000 And there will be those that see them as geniuses for the fact that we're now buying it back fully remediated for 650000 And along those lines, I had to pull out of our current budget, the FY15 uh, through FY19 capital improvement program, we had budgeted $3.1 million uh, for not only land, land acquisition, but also demolition. So uh, considering that, I think this is a pretty good bargain. Mr. Mayor. Also considering we will be obtaining a clean property. Yes, sir. Last week I made the comment and I want to make it again. Uh, this mayor and council on this issue has had a home run for every citizen in the city of Hagerstown. And uh, 
we've been able to do it because of an incredibly dedicated and helpful staff. And we thank them for that. Mike? You're here. Any other comments? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Uh, Any opposed say no. The ayes have it, the resolution is approved. Item C under new business is designation of a U.S. Bicycle Route 11 through Hagerstown. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move the Mayor and Council adopt a resolution expressing its approval and support for the development of U.S. Bicycle Route 11 through the city of Hagerstown and request the Maryland Department of Transportation to submit an application to the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials for the aforesaid designation. Second. Motion made by Mr. Metzner, second by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? Well, I'll make the comment again, a maiden work session. I think it's unfortunate that because people will confuse this with U.S. Route 11, the long, you know, the Cumberland Trail, the Valley Highway, um, and it'll cause confusion. I think the, the nomenclature is unfortunate, but I'm not going to vote against it because I support bike trails. Fortunately, the signs look a lot different. Well, uh, yeah, but people hear Route 11, which Route 11? You know, I think it's very confusing. It depends on if you're on a bicycle. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion made by Mr. Metzner, seconded by Mr. Munson, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Ayes have it, and the resolution is approved. Next up is item D, approval of a resolution authorizing a three-year contract with fireworks extravaganza. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move that the attached resolution be approved, which authorizes the approval of the execution of a three-year contract attached with fireworks extravaganza for Independence Day fireworks displays in 2015, 2016, and 2017. Second. Motion made by Ms. Nye, seconded by Mr. Brubaker. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Ayes have it, and the resolution is approved. Item E is the approval of a resolution, Sustainable Maryland Certified Program. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move for the approval of a resolution to authorize staff to register the city with and to seek certification through the Sustainable Maryland Certified Program. Program is for Maryland municipalities that want to go green, save money, and take steps to sustain their quality of life. Second. I heard Ms. Nye second first, so it's a motion made by Mr. Brubaker, seconded by Ms. Nye. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Ayes have it, and the resolution is approved. Next up is item F, approval of a license agreement with St. Mary's Catholic for eastbound downtown gateway sign. Mr. Mayor, I hear. I hereby move for the approval of a license agreement with St. Mary's Catholic Church to allow for the installation of an eastbound downtown gateway sign. The sign will be located at the extreme southwest corner of their property adjacent U.S. Route 40. Second. Motion made by Ms. Nye, seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Agreement is approved. Item G is the approval of a memorandum of understanding with the BISFA Foundation for grants for the renovation of 3640 North Potomac Street and to provide a stipend for gallery management and internships. Mr. Mr. Mayor, hereby move that the attached memorandum of understanding between the City of Hagerstown and the Barbering School for the Arts Foundation be approved. The BISFA Foundation has been awarded a $50,000 grant from the City Foundation, a private nonprofit entity, to be utilized for the renovation of 36 to 40 North Potomac Street provide a stipend for gallery management and internships. The MOU outlines the rights and obligations between the two parties in connection with the utilization of grant funds. Second. Motion made by Mr. Alshire, seconded by Ms. Nye. Any discussion? It's a great example of a public-private partnership and uh, grateful to staff and city and the BISFA Foundation for making it happen. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. MOU is approved. Item H is an after-school program. 
Mayor, I hereby move for Mayor and Council approval of city funding and support after school programs conducted by the Robert W. Johnson Community Center. This program was originally funded under the CSAFE grant, but in recent years has been funded through the city's general fund. This program will run for the 14-15 school year with a cost of $18,020 in city funding support. Second. Motion made by Mr. Metzner, seconded by Mr. Alshire. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Ayes have it. <coughs> Funding is approved. Item I is approval of catalyst project number eight, authorizing two new full time positions to support neighborhoods through the vacant structures program. Mr. Mayor, hereby move for the Mayor and City Council to approve the addition of two full time code administration positions. One inspector coordinator for the program and one administrative position. These positions are necessary to support neighborhoods through the vacant structures program. These positions will be funded by an increase in the annual vacant structure fees. This action is consistent with the city's vision and commitment to housing and neighborhoods and the community city center plan. Second. Motion made by Mr. Rubaker, seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? Yes. Um, uh, this is not a time, uh, people would say, but to be adding positions given our budget situation. But I want to point out that earlier uh, we uh, approved legislation that would provide the fees to support these positions, and it's a sign of our investment outside, uh, our investment in trying to renew communities throughout the city, not just in the CBD. And, uh, you, you know, so we are working on it, and... Uh, these positions are to support that effort. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Motion is approved. Next up is item J, approval of a contract for tree planting citywide. Mr. Mayor, I have a move for the approval of contract number 14-14-TP-17 with Aspen Landscape Contractors, Inc. in the amount of NTE not to exceed 167,000 trees will be planted along various streets and parks citywide. Funding for this project is from the Chesapeake Bay Trust Greening Grant in the amount of 95,000 and the Forest Conservation Act funding the amount of 72,000. Second. Motion made by Mr. Alshire, seconded by Mr. Brubaker. Any discussion? I just would like to say that I hope that everybody that would like to have a tree and if their sidewalk does meet the requirements, go for it. I wanted them. And my walks aren't wide enough. <laughs> Mine are. Very nice. For you. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. <clears throat> motion carries. Next up is the approval of purchase of four 2015 Ford Interceptor police vehicles. Mr. Mayor, I have been moved from Mayor and Council to approve the purchase of four 2015 police vehicles. Funding for this purchase shall come from FY1516 CIP revenues. The vehicles will be purchased from Breckford, Hanover, Maryland in the amount of $131,406. Second. Motion made by Mr. Alshire, seconded by Mr. Munson. All those in favor, of any discussion? Yes. Um, another example of uh, supporting the police department we have a budget issue, but uh, we, we have deferred purchase of vehicles for a long time, and uh, this will directly uh, impact the ability of the police department to deliver their services. So here is another investment in, uh, you know, trying to support the community. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Motion carries. Go and buy some cars, Chief. And uh, item K, I'm sorry, item L, approval of implementation of a 401A plan to the city's deferred compensation program. Mr. Mayor, I move from Mayor Council authorization for staff to implement a 401A plan as part of the city's deferred compensation program available to city employees. Creation of the 401A plan will allow employees who are not eligible to participate in the Maryland State Retirement System due to their retiree status to have the option to contribute to a deferred compensation program, the city's 401 play plan will offer investment options consistent with Hagerstown's 457B plan and will not have a vesting time requirement. The City of Hagerstown will contribute up to a maximum of 3% of an employee's annual salary as a match to contributions from employees who select to participate in the 401A plan. Second. Motion made by Mr. Alsire, second by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? 
All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Ayes have it, and the motion is approved. Item M, the approval of the first third grant application for 4345 South Potomac Street. Mr. Mayor, hereby move for the Mayor and City Council to approve the attached first third grant application for the renovation project at 43-45 South Potomac Street. The total project cost is $792,550. The first third grant amount is $250,000. Specifically, this grant application and related development plan meets the city's vision for the redevelopment of the city center and is in compliance with the program guidelines. Staff are authorized to issue a letter of commitment in the amount of $250,000. No fund will be dispersed until staff has verified that all work in the development plan is complete to the city's satisfaction and that a full accounting detailing the total project cost expenditure requirements have been met. Funding for this grant will come from the general fund reserve. <clears throat> Second. Motion made by Ms. Nye, seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? Yes, uh, going to be a broken record here. Uh, more investment, concrete investment in the community, and that's not a pun. Um, but uh, quality housing, downtown, refurbished building, uh, more investment. Any other discussion? Yeah. Uh, during our work session, uh, I certainly expressed my reservation. Uh, I don't think that we have uh, anything within the provision of this investment that uh, would preclude this housing from becoming exactly uh, 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 that type of housing that, that I don't think we want to uh, uh, provide the citizens uh, public funds to invest in. Uh, however, it, it does come with a strong commercial component. And uh, as rightly pointed out when we started this program, uh, the effort is to invest in the infrastructure of the buildings rather than the uh, business operations uh, that would um, occur there. I think that this uh, does that. I think it accomplishes that task. It's reassuring to see other ones uh, coming to fruition or at least underway. Uh, and, and I think it's a, a, a good thing. Uh, and I think that this company has uh, represented themselves as exactly being able to, to do what we're looking uh, to have happen. Any other discussion? Motion made by Ms. Nye, seconded by Mr. Mensner. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. The motion carries and the grant is approved. We have one last item from the consent agenda, the network cameras, Skyline Technology Solutions. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I uh, would, move, would move that we approve this item um, for which I need a second. Second. But I would like to make a couple of comments. So the motion is made by Mr. Munson to approve, Second. seconded by Mr. Alshire. Please discuss. Okay, th thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. The reason I've asked that this be held to the end is because, um, well, basically I'm doing this because I thought that Heather Gesford made a very articulate and impassioned plea this evening about the problems in uh, her former end of town. Now, I don't know where these, these particular cameras are scheduled to go, but it seems to me that based on what I hear from the citizens, all the, the citizens in that area, including the ones on Jefferson Boulevard, um, there is, it's a really bad time there. I was told recently by an individual who owns a property on Jefferson Boulevard that if he's working in his garage, he doesn't dare leave it unlocked to go to his house for any reason, for fear that there will be nothing left in it when he walks back to it. To the extent that cameras can be effectively and efficiently used to fight this battle in this part of town, uh, I'm asking the chief if he will look at that and look at that seriously and see that uh, maybe putting some cameras up down there will make a difference, Chief. I don't know. I, uh, I, have, mixed, I have mixed reactions about putting cameras everywhere because I, 
I do believe in privacy, but uh, the problems are getting worse and worse, and maybe this is the answer, uh, at least in part. So um, to the extent that you'll take a serious look at that, Chief, uh, I would really seriously appreciate your doing it. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion by Mr. Munson, seconded by Mr. Alshar, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Eyes have it, and we will be adjourned.